from little venues like little coffee shops around LA, around Lamar Park, around Pomona, around the Valley, San Pedro, these little coffee shops where we just start spitting our poems, that all of a sudden became this really big scene, got to the mainstream, it inspired producers uh, abroad, all of a sudden shows like Deaf Poetry came on HBO, which we heavily inspired. What can I do for you, Rod? You just tell me what can I do for you. It's a very personal, very important thing. Are you ready, Jim? I'm ready. I just want to make sure you're ready, brother. Here it is. Show me the money. <laughs> if you ask a poet why they write poetry, money is not going to be their answer. This, this is... It's an art. You need to just, you know, you got to make some sacrifices. You're not going to ball the fuck out. But I think that it should be a part of that. I think being able to be successful beyond our little community um, should not only be a dream, but should be a reality. There are a lot of poets that don't want spoken word to go mainstream. They don't, they don't you know, they're like, what? Mainstream? You better what? You know, it's all underground. You got to keep it underground. Keep it gully, son, for life. Prefer to tell the truth than to go mainstream and lie. The people who go, who go mainstream are the people who never will go mainstream. Plus mainstream. Gil Scott Heron was signed to Arista Records. He was the first artist on Arista Records to come out. Um, that album sold over a million copies, laid the funding so that that, out, that record label could stay afloat. That was a poetry album. Mainstream to me, it means that my son is eating, I'm able to provide health care for him, I have a car that runs well, and we live decent. We ain't got to live wealthy, but we live decent. Poets going mainstream doing that? I don't know. We don't have a commercially viable industry. So every, every door that is open, you have to kick open. Some, some of the dopest poems or poems that, 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 we, that we care about has that uh, revolutionary mind, you know, tongue to it. Can you dig it? And uh, mainstream don't want the revolutionary tongue. Can you dig it? So that's why poetry has had such a difficult time for years. Can you dig it? And uh, many of us are cool with that. When your hair refuses to act right, you gotta gangster your hair to grow how you want it to grow, to do what you want it to do. You gotta palm those strands and palmade them in the direction that you want them to grow. And when you're completely fed up, find yourself a hat or cut it all the way off and go get you some sun because you are bigger than your hair. Your bed, magazine showroom kind of perfect, dolled up and dressed for the royal of a queen, a sure sign that you know who you are, but don't let its allure get the best of you. You can't waste your God-given energy on too much sleep, so sleep only when you need to. Sleep only when you need to. When you feel as if there's no work to be done, make yourself an agenda and stick to it. When your life and your body starts to feel too heavy, cut down on your intake. No complaints, no excuses. If you steer clear of mistakes, there is less to cover up. When your children tell you that they love you, do not brush their words off like crumbs on a counter. Hear them, receive them, the way that you hear sermon because they mean it. When the air seems to leave your lungs momentarily, pray it back to where it needs to be. Close your eyes and breathe it in deep and listen to God's greatest instrumental and don't let it go until your breath is back on track. When your eyes are acting a bit leaky faucet, find yourself a quiet room. Forget how strong that you're supposed to be and remember even Jesus wept. Break the pipes, let them burst until all your fluids have been flushed out and sit in your breakdown. And allow for all your makeup to drip to the floor and avoid mirrors until you're ready to show them your smile. Apply a little eyeliner and keep it pushing. Let me see you in the world, maybe the show the road. When it did good to your baby, throw a bowl. Cause we are so get so. This is D E F Ho. Yes, we are so get so. We rock these beautiful motherfucking homes. Listen, I am a fighter and a lover. I'm a freaky baby daddy. I'm a bad motherfucker. 2003, 2005, you saw, you know, the influence of what started to happen when you had, you know, Russell Simmons' Deaf Poetry Jam. 
Everybody's a poet now. The market is, the, the, the stage is, is saturated. HBO Deaf Poetry made everybody a poet. Deaf Poetry Jam was dope at the beginning. First two, two seasons, and then after that, I thought it was um starting to go downhill a little bit. I think a lot of the newer poets viewed it as sort of like a rite of passage or something. Part of you for that moment, for that weekend while you're there, feel like you've arrived. Like, as a poet, like you've, you've arrived in this space. But the reality is, is you get your few hundred dollars and, you know, maybe you come up on a little wardrobe and you take that flight back home and I'm back to the nine to five. Like, I'm back to broke. I did this Love Like poem on Death Poetry. People like hating on it, like, oh, this nigga did a love poem. And that's important. We didn't get to see that, you know. I'm a big media person. Ever since the Cosby show went off the air in 91, there ain't been another non-dysfunctional black family on TV since. You know what? Why not a spoken word show? Because we haven't produced it. I think more and more poets are thinking about it. Poets can't sit around waiting for uh, this industry to give us money. I mean, poetry has, uh, you know, the poets have always been about creating a way because we've always had to show them. Like, we've always had to show, create our own box. I feel like all the hood shows, like even Moesha back in the day had their little, you know, the open mic thing. Moesha took the opportunity to film the opening of her show in Lamar Park. And she also, if you watched her her series, showcased a lot of poetry. Surprisingly enough, even George Lopez does, uh, his his char his daughter's character in the show, uh, it happens to be a poet. Girlfriends, even though I shouldn't know that because I'm a dude, but I know that. Um, Girlfriends had Saul Williams on there. Slam, Slam was like my number one poet movie. Of course Slam, one of my other favorite movies. Um, Oh, there was a movie with uh, Christina Milian and the guy that's married to Mariah Carey right now. And they have poetry in it. And actually, Dante, the creator of the Poetry Lounge, performed in that movie. I thought that was really cool. Love Jones. Um... Love Love Jones. As a matter of fact, when Love Jones came out, <clears throat> I was the poet that performed for the premiere in L.A. I'm trying to remember Love Jones because I'm only 21 now, so I was like five when that came on. So I'm trying to pitch it, but I remember I remember I liked it. And I think Love Jones and all that shit was just like, maybe they were trying to feel artistic or, or urban or something, and so they just added it. Love Jones was less about poetry to me than it, Love Jones was about a romance. They made Love Jones too. I want to be in it. <laughs> it was Lorenz's leather jacket. Need a long weave. I mean, it was like, it Love Jones, it was Chicago. Love Jones was... As far as hip hop, Jay-Z, Common, Lupe Fiasco, uh, Most Deaf. DOC coined the phrase Rhythmic American Poetry. Rap. So, and when you look at poetry, and then you look at rap, it's a lot of similarities. They're not exactly the same, because a lot of times rhymes are written for the sake of rhyming. Poetry is written for the sake of spitting the truth. And a lot of times rappers don't spit the truth. They rhyme, but they don't always spit the truth. Kanye embraced it. He used it. Lupe used it. Uh, Jill Scott, obviously, um, poet, soul music. The Roots. The Roots, honestly kicked off a lot of open mics with having Ursula on their records. Um, I know Erica Badu has embraced it. Um, Tupac Shakur. You know, I don't even know why he's last on my list. He, you know, but definitely Tupac Shakur. Hip hop is probably most closely aligned to spoken word. You get a lot more mainstream artists that are embracing it. Burnt, burnt, burnt. Somewhere an ex-girlfriend is getting fucked. I mean, it's been some time now and I'm still walking around like this yo shit. Your name on my lips, your taste in my mouth. Damn girl, when I go to the bathroom and unzip, I still smell your scent on me. And it's been a long time since we last kissed, last touched, last fucked. I'm reading books now, searching for conversation on how to make up and make peace. 
I'll admit getting on without you, life so ain't been easy. I mean, your words were like power yoga to me. Had my mind stretched out on some other shit. I mean, seven habits of highly effective people, shit. You had eight, nine, and ten. I'm just mad and upset that I wasn't the one. I mean, maybe I was the one at some point in time, but like the sixth man, I came off the bench, man. Took it around your back, squared up, and tripped, man. I am lady. Enough to fool your mama, I am trash what your daddy dreams about while laying next to your mama. I am judgmental, hypocrite, and crude. I am big earrings swing around the way, girl, neck pop and lock and rolling eyes and back ahead. I am for you to play with, for you to throw away, for you to make them realize their mistake. I am mistake set on replay. I am mistake, I am mistake, I am miss. Take my name, I do not own myself. The symbols are bigger than the poems I write. Ancient concepts of here and now, and thereafter, hereafter. Hades sounds like some earth I know, and heaven too. And God sounds like it often has hands, but we know it is formless and transcendent and with us. And some of us know if the beginning is the end, it's over. I'm chilling in the cut of the universe. Where the angels call black holes, black mothers, and black stars are born, and burn blue and purple. She sold her soul by the seashore. She also sold her last stitch of dignity to satisfy the so-called addiction she had to this narcotic that was planted into our community by government and city officials. She should have blown the whistle, but we couldn't hear the whistle because she was deaf, dumb, and blind like 85% of mankind just asked the poor righteous teachers. Or maybe we should ask Peter, because Peter packed the pipe and then passed it to him. And if Peter packed the pipe, then Peter must have been the pusher. Man, this is just a riddle, man. But how much crack could a crackhead crack if a crackhead could crack crack? Shit, none, because she's a smoker, not a cracker. I got a message for you all on way before my final call. And I'm trying to stay away from the prisons and the stain stalls. And when the rain falls, I can hear a faint call. And it's like, man, let's fuck these bullets and substitute them for paintballs. And that way, instead of dying, we'll be buying yellow Clorox and Tide. And instead of wearing bulletproof vests, we'll be wearing tie-dye shirts with pride. Fuck, let's go outside. We need to stay inside. So the rats is only soft-ass cheers so we can build an inside. I'm tired of this fight, just like I'm tired of gym tights. I'd rather be in Pomona, California, where the mic and Tim Lights. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know of one positive thing I saw come out of Slam. It's, it's battle, it's sport, it's war.